Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to do this. Roll the tape. Right, so now that you've seen that, what is happening behind the scenes? You will need to be familiar with runtime virtual textures and have one enabled uh, and be sort of using one at the moment. I have another tutorial that I'll link uh, first thing in the Schneebel, and it basically covers how to use runtime virtual textures to color the grass above the landscape. So the only difference with that is in that we set it to just the base color channel. With this one, we're going to set it to the option below that, which is base color and specular roughness, normal map, and not world height, I don't believe. Yeah, once you've done that, then you're ready to do the rest of this. So, what if we just sampled a landscape layer and just shucked that into a runtime virtual texture? If you don't know what sampling a landscape layer does, basically it just outputs a zero to one black to white value of where you've painted this layer. So usually you'd be using this for things like uh, your grass, landscape grass outputs. I've hijacked the specular and roughness channels of this runtime virtual texture, and I'm just using them for my desert layer and my snowy layer. You might be able to pack it into a normal map by like appending it or making a, a float three or whatever and then unpacking it by doing a weird contrast trick, but I'm not too sure. I haven't actually experimented with, with that myself. The reason that I have to sort of use this workaround is because you can only have one runtime virtual texture output node per material. If I tried to plug something in this, it would give me an error. Um, so basically my specular channel is my sand and my roughness channel is my snow. So what can we do with this information? If I jump into my tree leaf texture, we could do something like a lerp. So the regular color goes into the A and in B, I'm gonna do just white. Let's go white, put that into B. And the alpha is going to be runtime virtual texture sample. We are gonna get the roughness and put that into the alpha. I'm gonna put another lerp. I love to lerp. And I'm gonna put this one into the A and this, uh, plug that back into my subsurface in my base color. Uh, the B is gonna be just a pooey brown color. That looks dead brown to me. That's gonna go in the B. And the alpha is gonna be the specular channel. Rightio, I've compiled that. I've got a landscape right in front of me and I'm going to go to my landscape. I'm gonna to go to the paint section and start painting some desertiness. And you can see straight away, leaves have gone brown. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. Let's get some snow and do the same thing. Bam. Trees look snowy. Pretty unreal, huh? <laughs> Right, so that's sort of that's sort of the basics of it. Uh, you know, changing the color of a texture based on what landscape layer it's on. Obviously, you could do this manually with, you know, basically duplicating all of your trees and changing the materials to a new material and then only placing them in there. But, you know, being me, I am probably the laziest piece of shit that you'll ever meet. So this is so much more... It's sort of just way more fluid if you're, you know, creating a level or something to just be able to paint, you know, bam, and everything's fucking white. Um, and it also works really well with transitions. So if I put the strength down a fair bit and the radius all the way up, you can see in these like transitional spots, you know, they're, they're, they've gone a bit more white. There's no sort of point where it is fully snowy and then it's just grassy as hell. So that's sort of the basic principles of it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some more advanced sort of things. Basically, you can do literally anything and then just use this landscape layer as the lerp alpha and it will go between, you know, the standard and whatever you want it to become. 
So what this little bit here is doing, um, oh, hello. Huh? What? Oh no. Oh no. Don't hit the, don't press all my buttons. Sorry, before I was rudely interrupted by Lady Cat, what I was explaining was wherever there is desert, I'm going to using the vertex color that's been painted on the leaves, which goes from uh, closest to the branch to the tips of the leaves. I'm basically going to reduce the opacity of this by this. And what that's going to do is uh, sort of make the leaves shrink or like sort of die off uh, the, the closer into the desert they are. So as I paint over these trees, all of their leaves just die off gradually. Um, and it, it looks amazing to sort of just paint like this. It really feels like you're changing the landscape with just one click. Uh, and then I can go and add them all back in, you know? It's like I'm painting leaves now, watching it all bloom back to life. Um, so this is a tree without any leaves. Uh, and as I increase this value, this is at zero and this is at one. Uh, you can see it paints snow onto the top of our of our trees, uh, basically just using the Vertex Normal World Space node. Very, very handy node. Uh, masked in the B channel, which means basically any face of the, the mesh that's facing upwards will be affected by the, the doobly-doo. What I can do is kill this parameter and get our S. S is for snow, our specular, and put that in instead. Then I'll save it, wait for it to compile. We go back to our scene and I've cocked it up. Uh, it's actually the other channel. Right, I've plugged in the correct channel this time and let's go over to our snow and voila, we've got some snow on the appropriate place. Get the green. Oh, that's so cool. And desert again and green again and snowy and green again nice sandy all right well that's all from me today uh, i hope you learned something i hope this is sort of gotten your brain juices flowing on, you know, what is possible using this technique. If you have any cool ideas or any implementations that you come up with, post them in the schnibbly bob, in the schnibboob, in the gooblabloober. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I haven't really given it heaps of thought yet. These are just the sort of things that sprung to mind immediately. What we've done with this is we've gotten landscape layer information and we're injecting that up into the materials that are on the landscape. Uh, which is, which is dope. Anyway, I hope you learned something. And with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.